Hi, my name is Isabella and I'm the trainee curator at Bodmin Keep. Over the past few months, I've been working with the citizen curators on a redisplay of the section of the museum dedicated to 1857 and the siege of Lucknow. Eighteen fifty seven was a turning point for British colonialism in India when Indian soldiers rose up in rebellion against British rule. Up until this point, the British controlled large parts of India and they'd taken control through a series of alliances and conflicts. Now, throughout this process, they were reliant upon Indian employees, Indian soldiers, who were known as sepoys. There were many reasons why these sepoys rose up in rebellion and why they were joined by Indian nobles and civilians. The British had made changes to the way land was administered, so they introduced different taxes and different agricultural policies. From the 1830s, there was also a movement to try and make these British colonies more British, more Christian and, in their eyes, more civilised. Similar changes were affecting the organisation of the Sepoy Army. There were changes to pay and changes that affected the social and religious practices of mainly Hindu and Muslim soldiers. Lucknow was a city in northern India, in a region known as Ud or Awad, and this was a region that had recently been taken over by the British in 1856, and so tensions were still high. Now Lucknow was not the first city to rebel, which gave the British forces there time to prepare for an attack. In total, 855 British soldiers, 712 Indian soldiers and 153 volunteers were defending 1,280 civilians. By June of 1858, the British and their Indian allies had forced the majority of rebel groups to surrender. Now these conflicts have gone down in British history as the Indian Mutiny, a term that captures how the British felt betrayed by the Indian soldiers that they were employing who were then rebelling against them. But this term is controversial, so not everyone agrees with this term. And in fact, we've chosen to use words such as rebellion or uprising instead. Alternative terms include War of Independence, which represents how the Indian soldiers were fighting for their freedom. And what we've got in the museum is a voting section for you to tell us what you think the rebellions of 1857 should be called. We have this display in our museum because the 32nd Cornwall Regiment of Foot were at the defence of Lucknow. In fact, Brigadier John Inglis of the 32nd commanded the defenders. Through this redisplay, we're trying to bring to you a more balanced and representative account of what happened in 1857, looking at both the British and Indian perspectives. I have here an object that sparked the uprising of 1857. This is a cartridge for the Enfield rifle musket, a weapon that was being tested in India. A cartridge is a paper casing that contains gunpowder on one side and a musket ball on the other. Now these cartridges would have been greased with linseed oil, beeswax and animal fat in order to keep them dry. And the animal fat was the problem because rumour spread amongst the sepoys that the fat was beef and pork. And so for the Hindu soldiers, cows are sacred animals and for the Muslim soldiers, Pork is a forbidden food in the Quran, and so those soldiers did not want to follow the standard practice of having to bite open the cartridge in order to pour the contents down the barrel of the gun and to fire the weapon. And it was the harsh treatment of those who refused to accept the cartridges that sparked the uprising. This is the quilt of Lucknow, which was made by a soldier of the 32nd Regiment during the siege. It's a military quilt, which means it has a single layer of patchwork with no padding or decoration on the reverse. Now the quilt was made from the uniform of fallen soldiers. The red and white fabric was taken from the jackets of soldiers, while the blue fabric was taken from the trousers. And the green fabric came from a billiards table that was destroyed during the siege. 
Another object that we have in our collection is the seal of the Begum of Oud. And Begum was a title for a female ruler. Now we think that this belonged to Begum Hazrat Mahal, who was the female ruler of the state of Oud, in which Lucknow was located. And we think that because the seal has two winged mermaids, either side of a figure riding a horse. And the mermaids, one here and one here, are one of the symbols that you can find on the royal standard of Oud. Now this is a wax seal that would have been used to seal official documents from the Begum and it dates to July of 1858, by which time the rebellion at Lucknow had been suppressed and the Begum was forced to retreat to Nepal. These are badges that belong to the 16th Rajputs, a regiment of foot soldiers in the Indian Army. Now this regiment was created in 1861, but it was nicknamed the Lucknow Regiment and on the badges there is a ribbon that reads Defence of Lucknow. Now the regiment earned this nickname because they were made up from the 13th, 48th and 71st Native Infantry Regiments and it was men from these regiments that fought alongside the British during the Siege of Lucknow. These men were responsible for defending the Bailey Guard Gate, which is what the tower and gate structure on the badges represents.